berdoa sebelum kita memulai kebaktian pagi hari ini. Mari kita sama-sama mengangkat hati kita di hadapan Tuhan. Mari uh, bersyukur buat apa yang Tuhan sudah kerjakan dalam kehidupan kita. Mari kita berdoa. Tuhan terima kasih kami datang pagi hari ini Tuhan kami mau mengangkat hati kami. Kami mau mengangkat tangan kami di hadapan Engkau. Dan kami mau bersyukur Tuhan buat segala kebaikan-Mu dalam kehidupan kami. Buat perlindungan, buat penyertaan-Mu Tuhan. Kami bersyukur Tuhan Engkau begitu baik dalam kehidupan kami. Kami bersyukur buat segala sesuatu yang terjadi Tuhan. Ada waktu-waktu yang begitu mengecewakan. Ada waktu-waktu yang begitu menyenangkan. Tapi kami percaya Tuhan bahwa Allah Engkau pakai segala sesuatu. Dan pada akhirnya itu mendatangkan baik, uh, menatangkan kebaikan bagi kehidupan kami. Terima kasih Tuhan buat pagi hari ini Tuhan. Kami um, mau memuji engkau, kami mau menyembah engkau sebab engkau layak menerima segala pujian, segala hormat, segala syukur kami Tuhan, Tuhan terima kasih buat pagi hari ini thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus mari kita angkat lagu ini sebagai ucapan syukur kita pagi hari ini, thank you Lord Hear these praises from the grateful heart Each time I think of you, the praises start Love you so much, yes Lord Jesus, love you so Oh 
sama-sama menaikkan doa Bapa kami. Bapa kami yang di surga, dikuduskanlah namamu, datanglah kerajaanmu, jadilah kehendakmu di bumi seperti di surga. Berikanlah kami pada hari ini makanan kami yang secukup. Dan ampunilah kami akan kesalahan kami, seperti kami juga mengampuni orang yang bersalah kepada kami. Janganlah membawa kami dalam pencobaan, tetapi lepaskanlah kami daripada yang jahat. Karena engkau lah yang punya kerajaan, dan kuasa, dan kemuliaan, sampai selama-lamanya. Amin, amin, amin. Saudara bersuka cita hari ini, amin. Siapa yang bersuka cita hari ini, boleh angkat tangannya. Saudara bersuka cita di rumah Tuhan, amin. Kita akan memuji Tuhan. Um, saya berharap kita semua dengan penuh semangat kita bertepuk tangan kita menari di hadapan Tuhan. Amin. Amin.
Tuhan terima kasih buat pagi hari ini Kami mengucap syukur Tuhan Tuhan aku berdoa pagi hari ini Biar Allah engkau yang menyiapkan hati kami Tuhan Jadikan hati kami seperti tanah yang subur Tuhan Sehingga setiap benih firman Tuhan itu boleh tertabur Itu boleh berakar, bertumbuh dan berbuah dalam kehidupan kami Terima kasih Tuhan aku mengucap syukur buat pagi hari ini Tuhan Allah engkau yang bekerja Roh Kudus engkau sendiri yang datang dan mengajar kami tempat ini Terima kasih Tuhan aku mengucap syukur buat pagi hari ini Hanya di dalam Nama Yesus kami berdoa dan seorang percaya Mari kita sama-sama katakan Amin, amin Sebelum kita mendengarkan firman Tuhan Mari kita sama-sama Saya undang kita semua bangkit berdiri Kita akan mengaku iman kita di hadapan Tuhan Dan kita akan mensiapkan hati kita untuk menangkan firman Tuhan Mari kita sama-sama mengaku iman kita di hadapan Tuhan Aku percaya Allah ku esa Maha kuasa dan maha besar Aku percaya Yesus Kristus adalah Allah sendiri Yang telah menjadi manusia Ia adalah juru selamat yang bertanggung jawab dan mengasihi aku. Aku percaya roh kudus adalah roh Allah sendiri yang senantiasa menyertai dan membimbing kehidupan. Aku percaya Alkitab ini adalah firman Allah yang akan menjadikan hidupku kudus berkemenangan, diberkati, penuh mujizat, dan selalu menjadi berkat. Berikan salam kepada kanan kiri. Katakan happy Sunday. Glad to see you today. Siap dengar firman Tuhan, amin Amin Selamat Pak Pastor Jeremy Good, good morning How are you all? Good, good. Well, uh, We are really glad to be here again It's not long since uh, we were with you But to uh, come back is always a joy There are several reasons why we like coming here. Number one, we're surrounded by friends. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I think of you as my my shoelace is undone. Oh, very bad. So we consider you our friends. I hope that you consider. Don't look at me when I do my shoelace is undone. There's another reason why we enjoy coming here, because Jeremy is a wonderful pastor. Well, I had a better response to the friend, so... <coughs> Do you remember last year I had a book called The Miracles of Jesus? Anybody remember that book? This is number two, and this is called, well, actually it's number three, but uh, this is called Beginnings, and it's from the book of Genesis. And if you bought the miracle book, you'll discover it's in exactly the same format. Really big print, so you don't need your glasses. Is this your girlfriend? <laughs> So, uh, very easy to read, very clear English, and uh, so, so this is the latest thing that we produced. You should all say, wow, that, that looks re really good. <laughs> so actually, uh, we got this from the printers last Wednesday, and so this is the first church in Adelaide in the world that's ever seen this. Wow, wow indeed. Uh, you do need to know that uh, we make a big investment in these books and uh, we've actually all in the process of sending uh, 30 or 40 copies of this book to pastors in the Philippines because you want me to hold it. Okay. Men aren't very good at doing two things at once. 
So maybe you would like to buy one of these uh, for yourself because it would make a great daily devotional. Or secondly, you might like to buy one and send it to your pastor in Indonesia. And it will bless them and encourage them and help them and give them lots of uh, sermon ideas uh, for their preaching. The cost of this book is $20, special today, $19.95. <laughs> so when, I, um, when we produced the Miracles book, we sent quite a number of books to Poland because Benice and I have had a big interest in Poland over the last 10, 15 years. We've been able to partner with the Polish church and plant 10 new churches in Poland. And so we uh, sent them to Poland uh, in big boxes and, and they were very encouraged to receive them. One church in a place called Łódź. Everybody say Łódź. Uh, you, you spell it L-O-D-Z. So Polish is a very strange language. Indonesian is much easier to understand. But uh, so, so they enjoyed it so much. They said, you must come and do a miracle seminar in our church. And four weeks today, four weeks time today, I'm going to be in Łódź on the Saturday doing a uh, Miracles of Jesus seminar. So I want you to pray for me over the next few weeks and say, Jesus, please bless Jeremy when he goes to Wuj. Now, there's another reason why you need to pray for me, because the temperature in Wuj right now is, we need a little drum roll, minus four. Wow. I wish I was going to Jakarta. <laughs> that would be much. I think maybe in Jakarta it is 34, not minus four. So would you pray? When you read, you know, your statement of belief, I believe in the Holy Spirit. You, you remember reading that? And it talked about how he does miracles. And so, Lord, I'm praying that when I go to Woods, uh, that there will be miracles uh, on that weekend. The final weekend, I'm in a place called Bidkush. And you spell that B-Y-D-O-C-Z-U-Z. -Z -Z. It's a very strange language. And uh, they said, oh, we would like the same seminar for us. So uh, that's what we're doing. Please get a copy of this. It's, uh, it'll bless you and help you. And maybe you would like to send it to your pastor in Indonesia. Or maybe you'd just like to give it to Pastor Jeremy and say, Pastor, he has 50 sermons for you to preach this, this, this year. Now, this is my wife, Bernice. Everybody say, hello, Bernice. And then we have some friends with us today. And you met Vu last time we were here. Everybody say, hi, Vu. Hi. And he has brought his daughter with him. Uh, he's, he's brought his wife with him today. Uh, and this is uh, May. Uh, she's a, uh, a lecturer, a professor, a, a whatever, at Flinders University. And uh, her skill is in linguistics. And you actually need to know that, that I write the book and she corrects it. Yeah, oh, they, oh I get it. It's like being at school, I, you know. I, I, I submit my paper and it comes back covered in red, you know. And uh, it, it's scary. So we, we, you know all about that, do you? Okay, so, so um, you are a great blessing to us. So thank you. There's another reason why I like coming to this church, and that is I love going to restaurants. <laughs> and I'm sitting on the front row, and I, what am I going to do? Okay. I, I, I like sitting on the front row and looking at the menu. Does anybody ever do that? Uh, one day, Bernice and I came here for lunch, and the food was just as good as the menu. Sometimes you go to restaurants, and the, the menu is better than the food. So, but but it, this is a good place. And, and I, I, I look at those things and it's got sides and snacks, uh, traditional soup, Indonesian curry. Oh, couldn't you? That, that's worth coming here during the week. 
uh, and then beef rendang, is that, is, is, is that how you say it? And then you've got the satay. Uh, when I went one of my visits to Indonesia, I fell in love with satay. I mean, fill the swimming pool with satay. I, I, just, I just swim in it. And then the, the traditional fried and the coconut rice, fried rice, fried noodle. And then my absolute favorite is kuei tau noodles. Oh, yes. You know, bring, did, did they open here today or not? Oh. The sermon, what I'm going to share with you today, is a little bit like that menu. It's like a buffet. You understand a buffet? You, you, can, you, you don't have a, a, a menu. They just array all the dishes, and you can choose what you would like to eat. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to share with you today are secrets to living a successful life. And I'm going to be saying a lot of things. And some of you would say, well, that really doesn't, oh, but that does apply to me. So, so I'll try the sade and I'll leave the curry for next week and, and whatever. What are some secrets of living a successful life? And I want to talk to you about possibly the most successful man in the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament has some great characters. Uh, Daniel, he was an incredibly successful man. Uh, like all of us in this room, he lived in a country that wasn't the place of his birth. Bernice and I are actually migrants. We, we came from England and the rest of you have come from Southeast Asia. And so you understand what it is to live in a different culture. And for Daniel, they tried, they changed his name and they changed his food, and they changed the language, and they, they did it, but, but he succeeded in a most difficult place. And then there was a guy called Abraham. Abraham lived in this fantastic city called Ur, you are, of the Chaldees, and it was an amazing, it was the leading city in the world at his time, and one day God says to him, uh, Abraham, you need to leave. Oh, we, we go, are we, where are we go? Are we going somewhere better? Oh, yes. Where are we going to live? In a tent. You know, living in tents, is, uh, I don't like camping. A anybody with me and say, I, I don't like camping. The worst thing about camping are the bathrooms, if they have bathrooms. You know, maybe it's a hole in the ground or maybe... I remember speaking at a youth camp and uh, I told them, I don't want to stay in a tent. I, 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 they put me in a tent. I said, where are the bathrooms? And they said, the bushes over there are the girls and the bushes over there are the boys. Well, that, that's, imagine Abraham saying to his wife, who is, she, he says, we're going to move. Oh, she said, on that new development on the hill, you know, the, uh, no, where are we going? I don't know. Where are we going to live? In a tent. <laughs> what, what about the bathrooms? There are no, but, but, but Abraham became incredibly successful. But the man I want to talk to, talk to you about today, was possibly uh, in the most dysfunctional family in history. Uh, there were four mothers in the family. Now, that's a problem. You know, you've got two mothers, two wives, and then you've got two other handmaidens who were given to the, 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 the householder just to produce sons. And the man I'm talking about had 10 older brothers. Do any of you have older brothers? Well, let me tell you about older brothers. They beat you up. You, you know, <laughs> they, they, they eat all the food. They get the best things. If, if you're the youngest, it's always the most difficult. Imagine having 10 older brothers. But these brothers, these 10 brothers didn't just hate him, they planned to kill him. And when they changed their mind, they, they then decided that they would sell him as a slave. So he has 10 older brothers, he has one younger brother, he has at least one other sister, uh, and it is a strange, strange family. Uh, what's the name of the person I want to talk to you about? What's his name? Joseph, 11th son to Jacob hated by his brothers, sold as a slave. When he's in Egypt, he's accused, even though he's innocent, ends up in prison. 
only to move from the prison to the palace and become the prime minister and the savior of thousands and thousands of people's lives and incredibly successful. So here is a smorgasbord on the words that Joseph said that if we apply to our lives will bring us similar success. The first thing we know about Joseph is that he, get, he comes to breakfast. He's 17 years old. He comes to breakfast and he says, uh, guys, I had a dream last night. We were all in a field and we were all reaping a harvest and your harvest bowed down to my harvest. Well, that made him very popular. Next day, he said at breakfast, I've had another dream. I dreamt of the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. And the sun and the moon and the 10 stars bowed down to me. And that made him even more popular. Uh, when he was in Egypt, they put him in prison, even though he was innocent. And while he was in prison, he met two workers from Pharaoh's household. One was the baker. The other one was the drink waiter. And they were both in prison and they both had dreams and Joseph interpreted the dreams. Eventually when he's released from prison, it's because Pharaoh's had a dream and it terrified Pharaoh. And the wine waiter said, oh, I forgot there's a guy in prison. <laughs> Joseph is brought and he interprets Pharaoh's dreams. No wonder that, they, uh, that Joseph's brothers called him that dreamer. Uh, do you ever dream? Do you ever have nightmares? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever have daydreams? Maybe you're in a class at college and, and it's boring and so you start thinking of Bali and, and you know, the, the, the beach and whatever. And do you have dreams or do you have delusions when your mind plays tricks on you? But there are dreams that come from God and those dreams don't go away. Somebody had a dream to start this church. And uh, you know, wow, look at it today. Every time we come here, it seems to be just that little bit stronger. And that's encouraging. And that's why we come, because we want to help you. We want to help you. We want to grow you as people. The dreams from God stir your faith and they sustain you in the delay. For Joseph... The delay lasted 23 years from when he had the dream until its fulfillment. What do you do in the, in the delay? You remember the dreams. The dreams support you. I want to encourage you, get a dream for your life. Sometime today, whether it's with a pad and pencil, pen, whether it's on your iPad or your, your tablet, just write down, this is what I can achieve in the next three years. You might want to write down three things or five things. This is what I want to achieve in, in the next three years. And when you write them, it's amazing how they speak to you when you actually write them down. And when you, when you see them, you then think to yourself, oh, that's, <clears throat> that's not really quite what I like. And so you then redefine your dream. And then having written them, you show them to God. You say, Lord, he, here are my dreams. Are, these are the things that I want to achieve over the next three years. And as you show them to God, God speaks to you. And then you, refine, you think, oh, maybe I could make that one a little clearer or a little better. Get a dream. If you aim at nothing, you will certainly achieve it. But if you identify your dream... There's no limit to what you can achieve. Everybody say dreams. dreams. I don't see it on that menu, but it is on God's menu for your life. The second thing that uh, Joseph said was probably one of the best words in the English language. No. I, I, I want you to say no. no. No, no, you don't say no. You say no. No. What, what, what's Bahasa for no? Dida. What? Dida. Dida. Tida. T-I-D-A. Cake. Kida. Okay. I want you to say it to me in Bahasa. No. Dida. Yes. Louder. 
No, stronger. When did Joseph say no? Oh, it was when he was in Egypt working for Potiphar as a slave. And uh, he's about 20, 22 years of age. And God blesses him. And he becomes, you know, the, the steward in charge of all of Potiphar's house. And Potiphar thinks, what a fine young man. And Mrs. Potiphar thinks, what a fine young man indeed. <laughs> and so every day, did you hear what I said? Every day she came to him and said, come and sleep with me. Come and have sex with me. And uh, what did Joseph say? Oh, no, no, no. Kira, whatever it is. Well, what did he say? And she, every day she's asking, every day she's pleading. Do you know that in their culture, if you were the slave owner, the slave would have to do whatever you said. And so she was quite, you know, in their culture, she had every right to say, sleep with me. But even though Joseph was in Egypt, there was nothing of Egypt in Joseph. Did you hear what I said? And even though we are in a world that is anti-God and anti-truth and anti-light, that there's nothing of the world in us. Because not only do we say yes to God, but we also say no to the enemy. When we are challenged with things, a little voice speaks to us and says, it doesn't matter. But it does matter. Because one day, Joseph, you're going to be prime minister. Do you really want to have a history if you say yes to the woman? And Joseph makes a decision. I can't be unfaithful to my family. I can't be unfaithful to my dream. I can't be unfaithful to Potiphar. And I will not be unfaithful to the Lord. But the little voice says, nobody will know. It's just you and the woman. Nobody will know. Now, now do a little count right now. Nobody will know? Well, Joseph will know. And the woman will know. And God will know. And the devil will know. And once she puts it on social media, the world will know about it. <laughs> Never think, oh, well, nobody sees, nobody knows. Because God sees everything and he knows everything. And Joseph said this wonderful word, no. This week, every one of us will be challenged. We may not be challenged sexually. We might not face that temptation. But part of the journey of Christianity is that we face temptation in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And this week, we will have the opportunity to say, no. say it again, no. no. The Bible still says, resist the devil and he will flee. How are we going? For, are, we, are we doing okay? Yes. So, uh, number three. The 20% solution. Everybody say 20%. Jeremy, what are you talking about? When Pharaoh had his two dreams, they terrified him. The first dream was of seven fat cows. And they were the fattest, finest cows he'd ever seen. And they are feeding on a beautiful field of, of lush grass. And then seven of the skinniest cows came along and devoured the fat cows. I actually did not know that cows were uh, can uh, cannibals. But these, these skinny cows ate the fat cows. And I think to myself, I wonder, after the skinny cows had eaten the fat cows, if the skinny cows were now fat. But they weren't. And Pharaoh's thinking, what on earth does this? He has another dream. And this time there is a harvest. And there are seven huge sheaves, you know, where, where they gather the, uh, the, the, the harvest together. And he thinks, wow, what a wonderful harvest. This is going to provide for the people. And then there are seven sheaves of wheat that are skinny and straggly and, and nothing. Uh, and those devour the, the big ones. And Pharaoh is thinking, what on earth does this mean? 
And of course, Joseph is introduced to him, and Joseph tells the, tells the meaning. He says there are going to be seven fantastic years. Seven years of plenty of rain, seven years of bountiful harvest, seven years when, when the barns will be filled with, with, with produce. They're going to be fantastic years and they will be followed by seven years of famine when there's no rain and no harvest. And it will be so bad in those seven years of famine that we will forget what the good years were like. And Pharaoh, this is what you should do. The answer, Pharaoh, if you want to survive those seven bad years is, everybody say this with me, the 20% solution. What are you talking about? Oh, Pharaoh, this is what you need to do. In the good times, save 20%. And that will enable you to live and survive in the bad years. I want you to say this, say this with me. Saving, Saving. Gives, you gives you power over money. If you spend everything, you'll end up poor. But if you save, you will end up wealthy and you will survive the difficult times. And so you need to, and this is exactly what happened. Pharaoh said, we need somebody to organize this and you look like the guy to do it. He had just come out of prison, but, but he was God's choice. And for seven years, they saved 20%. By the end of the second year, the barns were overflowing and their computers were overloaded. The, the, the memory that they couldn't record all what they had. At the end of the seven years, the, the, they, they had so much grain. And then the seven bad years come. If you follow the story, Egypt ends up not only surviving, but thriving in the difficult times. Now, let's draw a little graph. Here is uh, numbers, and here is time. If you draw a graph of your income, it doesn't flat line. It goes up, and it goes down, and it goes up, and it goes down. You, you have good months, you have not so good months, and, and here's the key. If in the good times you spend everything, you'll end up poor. But if you save in the good times, you'll be able to, you'll be able to survive the bad times. Now, what is it? It's the 20% solution. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is what my wife and I do. Every week, we give 10% of our income to God. Everybody say, we, we, we know what this is. We call it the tithe. So we give 10% to God. And then we endeavor to save 10%. So we are applying the 20% the, the solution to our lives. And though we may not be rich, God provides all our needs. So not only do we sell these books, but we give them away. And probably we might give away 20% of these books to pastors in developing countries so they can be helped and blessed. And that is the secret of prosperity. And if you want to live a successful life, let me encourage you this week, look at your finances. Look at what your income is. First of all, give to God and then start a saving program. Even if it's only 10% or, sorry, $10 or $20 a week, but put it away and start. And if you honor God, God will help you. Uh, number four, the fourth thing that uh, Joseph said was, God made him forget. Uh, he gets promoted from the prison to the palace. He becomes second to the king. And with the promotion comes a princess. Isn't that good? How many of you would like a promotion this week and it comes with a princess? <laughs> Amen, says Jeremy. Okay, so <laughs> uh, I'll now preach to you. So, and when you get the princess and you marry her, it's not very long before a little prince is born. What are you going to call your son, Joseph? Oh, I'm going to call him Manasseh. Not an Egyptian name, a Hebrew name. What does the name Manasseh mean? It means this, God made me forget. 
If you're driving down the road and all you're doing is looking over your shoulder at what is behind, you're going to have a crash. Is this Coca-Cola? This is Coca-Cola clear. Maybe God will turn this into Coca-Cola while I, you know, do you think he will? He did. Thank you very much. Thank you. So God made me forget. What did Joseph forget? He forgot all his trouble and all his family difficulties. Memories are amazing things. We remember words. We remember pictures. We remember smells. We remember tastes. The problem with our memories is that we usually remember what we should forget and we forget what we should remember. It is always good to remember past blessings. It's always good to count our blessings. And Joseph said, God made me forget my trouble and my father's household. In the New Testament, the Bible says that Herodias, the wife of Herod, uh, nursed a grudge against John the Baptist. She nursed a grudge. What do you do when you nurse something? Well, you hold it close and you feed it and you look after it. And so this woman has a grudge against uh, Her uh, John the Baptist and she keeps feeding it. She keeps feeding it. There are many things in life that happen to us that we don't deserve and we don't expect. Don't live in the past. Choose to forget. And the good news is that God can enable you to do that. Maybe things have happened to you that you didn't expect and didn't deserve. Don't live in yesterday. <clears throat> it will stop you advancing to tomorrow. In the movie Frozen, anybody, you know, there was a song in that movie. What was the song that everybody sang? <clears throat> Sorry? Let it go. Too often in life, we hold on to things that cripple our lives. And what we need to do is let them go. If you are resentful, you resense the feelings of what happened to you. And Joseph said, God made me forget. There's two things there. God gave him the power, but who did the forgetting? He did. And so God can enable you, but you have to make a choice to let it go. Well, Manasseh's born, and then the princess gets pregnant again, and here is the next child, and this child is called Ephraim. And number five, the fifth thing that Joseph said is that God has made me fruitful. And the word Ephraim, the name Ephraim, means doubly fruitful. So his name means fruitful, fruitful. Now you should be thankful uh, for your, your name is Justin. Justin, Justin. Justin? <laughs> I learned something when, uh, when I went, the first time I went to Indonesia, I discovered that the word for child is anak. Is that right? And the word for children is what? Anak, anak. Uh, and, and I think to myself, that's a bit like Australia. We have Wagga Wagga and Woi Woi and Jin Jin uh, and uh, Ephraim. What does it mean? It means fruitful, fruitful. Imagine you're Ephraim and you go to school and uh, the, the teacher says, now who's here today? We've got John and Mary and Susan and William and fruitful, fruitful. <laughs> Imagine, you know, you're at, the, you're at the supermarket with your mom and somehow you get separated and mommy, mommy, where are you? And then the voice comes over the loudspeaker, would fruitful, fruitful, <laughs> what, what, a, what a wonderful thing. What's your name? My name is fruitful, fruitful. I am doubly fruitful. God has got double blessings for you in the land of your affliction. 
in a place where you think, oh, uh, all I know is pain and suffering. Oh, no, says Joseph. I've been through the prison. Uh, I've lived in the delay. But now God has caused me to forget. And because I've forgotten, he's now made me doubly fruitful. Let me, let me speak over Glow Church Adelaide. The blessing of Ephraim, that this will be fruitful, fruitful. Amen. Let me speak over 2023, that in this church, fruitful, fruitful. So, so, so marry a princess and have your first son, call him Manasseh. And then call the second one, doubly fruitful. Oh, but these are difficult days we're living in. I'm still looking for my visa. I hope I can pass my course. It's all right. God's in control. And if you will forget you, if you'll let your yesterdays go, God can put you in a place where you are doubly fruitful. Amen. Oh, it's all right for you, Jeremy. You don't know what I've been through. Uh, I shouldn't have lived in that place. I should have lived some. If I'd have married somebody else, if I had a different job, if I'd won the lotto, and you know, I, I'm now a millionaire. Joseph could have said, if only my brothers hadn't hated me, if only Potiphar had believed me, if only the butler, the wine waiter had remembered me. We have to break free from the if only syndrome. Oh, if only, if only. Wherever you are, God wants you to be not just fruitful, but to be doubly fruitful. Amen. Iceland. Anybody ever been to Iceland? Anybody know what the capital city of Iceland is? Reykjavik. Well, very good. Bananas grow in Iceland. True or false? False. false. Who said that? Oh dear. Iceland has many volcanoes and they use the heat and the steam from the volcanoes for hot houses, glass houses, where they grow all sorts of vegetables and bananas. So here we are in Iceland called Adelaide and you think, oh, if only I could be home, if only things could be different. But God wants you to bloom where you are planted and wherever you are. Oh, God has made me doubly fruitful and the desert will blossom like a rose and the season will change and night will give way to morning and joy will come. And I want you to say right now, I am blessed. I am blessed. Say it twice. I am blessed. I am blessed because I, I, I'm no longer whoever I am. My name is Ephraim and I am fruitful, fruitful. Hold your shoulders back. <laughs> Lift up your chin. Call me Ephraim. Uh, number six, how are we going through the menu? Uh, are you enjoying this smorgasbord? So, so number six, <laughs> Joseph said this, you intended to harm me. God intended it for good. The story is, is that father Jacob has died and the 10 brothers think we are in trouble because Joseph is still the prime minister. Dad is dead. He will now be, he'll pay us back for what we did to him. So they, they came to him and they said, Joseph, uh, our dad told us something before he died. Oh, did he? He didn't tell me. What did he tell you? He told us, you've got to look after us. You know, don't believe those 10 guys. You know, that they, they were a bunch of crooks. But this is what Joseph said. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended good. Here's the wonderful news about Christianity. God turns things around. God, even though things don't work out for us, God uses the difficulties to bless our lives. And Joseph said, all that you did was to harm me, but God was leading and directing. He was, I think this is the high point of Joseph's life when he said, hey guys, I'm now in a position where I can get even with you, but I'm choosing to forgive you. That is the cream on the cake. He has the power to imprison them or execute them. But there is nothing more beautiful than forgiveness. 
And there is nothing more sour than unforgiveness. Things have happened to us, and we might say, oh, what that person did, I just cannot get over it. Here's the good news. Not only does God forgive us, but he can put his forgiveness in our heart to forgive others. And that's a wonderful thing. So, Lord, we're not going to carry unforgiveness. We're going to choose to forgive. Because even when people intended us harm, God turned it for good. I told you this before, but uh, 18 months ago, I enrolled in a university to do a master's degree in creative writing, and I got turned down. Oh, those rotters. Oh, those mean people. They said my, my first degree wasn't, wasn't good enough, and, and I thought, you know, so, so I, I sucked my thumb and went home and cried. No, I didn't. I went home and wrote a book. <laughs> Miracles. It came out of a position of disappointment. And now, not only have I written one, I've written two. Fruitful, fruitful. We, we should have called it fruitful, fruitful. Because what people can harm us with, God can turn around for good. Number seven. Number seven, don't leave my bones in Egypt. Joseph is now 110 and he's dying. He calls his two sons to him. Their names were Manasseh, Manasseh. Manasseh and Ephraim. Fruitful, fruitful. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> and he says, boys, I'm coming close to my death. I don't want you to bury me in Egypt. Now, now think about this. Where did they bury the pharaohs in Egypt? Where did they bury their important people? Where did they bury the, the, their prime ministers? In the pyramids. I mean, those are huge burial chambers. They are still existing today. Joseph, you're the prime minister. You're the guy that saved the nation and saved the world. There'd be a big place for you. Oh, no, no, no. Don't bury me in Egypt. I want you to keep my body in a coffin because one day... All that God has promised us will come to pass. And when that happens and we become our own nation and we get our own land, take that coffin with my bones and bury me in the land of Canaan. Don't leave my bones. In. What is important about this, Jeremy? I think this is possibly the greatest thing that Joseph said. Let's imagine 300 years go by. And all the family get together. Maybe it's Christmas. Maybe it's new. They get together for, for a celebration. And uh, one of the great, great, great grandchildren says, what's with the coffin in the corner? <laughs> oh, that's great, great, great granddad Joseph. Why haven't we buried him? Because he's telling us one day, the promises of God will come to pass. One day God will honor his covenant. One day our family will become a nation. One day God will place us in our promised land and we will have our own land. And when that happens, granddad, great, great granddad Joseph is saying, take me with you because I don't want a pyramid in Egypt. I would rather have a cave in Canaan. One day the promises of God will come to pass. Don't leave me, take you with me. Let me encourage you. The promises of God over your life will come to pass. The covenant God has made with us will be fulfilled. Your future is better than your past. And Joseph said, don't leave my bones here. And for three, four hundred years, the bones of Joseph spoke to his descendants. It is not how well you run. It is how well you put the baton in the hands of others. Our life is not an individual race, it is a relay race. And in a relay race, it's all about how well you pass the baton. It's not how much I know, it's how much I teach. It's not how much I receive, it's how much I give. And Joseph is saying, don't leave my bones, I am investing in other people. Okay, last one. This is the dessert. This is, do they have any dessert on there? 
they got fried ice cream or, <laughs> or oh, I, I went to I went to Singapore and we had nine layer cake, um, seven layer cake, whoa, whoa, sticky rice covered in coconut, and with the liquid sugar in the middle. Can you get that in Adelaide? Oh. Here's the dessert. Are you ready? Don't quarrel on the way. So, so this, this incident is that Joseph has now revealed himself to his brothers. He's the prime minister. He's their brother. And they are, oh, dear me. And uh, Pharaoh says, go back, get your father and bring him. And I'm going to give you five or six wagons. I'm going to fill them with the best things that Egypt has. All the food you need, all the provision with clothes and gold and silver, go and get your dad. And so Joseph is now standing next to these five, six wagons with his brothers. And these are the last words he says. Don't quarrel on the way. He says, I know what you guys are like. You lie and you cheat and you deceive. Don't quarrel. Get along. One of the last prayers of Jesus was, Father, make them one. <laughs> he was saying, hey guys, don't quarrel. D did the disciples ever quarrel? Yeah. Oh, I think they did. I want to sit on your No, I want to sit on your <laughs> They argued about who was going to be the greatest. They said, oh, we saw a man casting out devils, but he's not one of us, and we stopped him. The, the, the Quarreling. If the devil cannot stop a church, he will divide a church. Shall I say that to you again? The devil can't stop the church. Jesus said, I'll build my church. But what he does, he sows seeds of disunity. He, 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 sow, he sows petty arguments amongst us. And we start to quarrel. And when we quarrel, sweetness becomes bitterness. When we argue, friends become rivals. When we argue, the journey becomes longer. <clears throat> when you do marry the princess and you have Manasseh and Ephraim, when you go on a journey, they're in the back seat. Are we there yet, Dad? Oh, he touched me. He's on my side of the seat. Children love to... Don't quarrel along the way. It makes the journey longer and it makes life harder. In the Middle Ages, in Europe, they had something called a crossbow. Anybody ever seen a crossbow? It, was a, it wasn't a bow like this, but it was a frame, and they put a, an arrow, and they would fire it, and it would go at incredible speeds. And the crossbow arrow is called, and I discovered this, a quarrel. What a strange thing. And I thought about it, and I thought, that's what the devil does. When you have a quarrel with somebody, you are firing an arrow into their hearts and it hurts you and it scars you and it can kill you. And Joseph says, don't quarrel along the way. It's definitely time to finish. What time is it? Oh, oh dear me. I am sorry. So here we go. Here's the menu. Here's the menu for a successful life. Here are eight secrets for a successful life. L let's read them together. Dreams. No, no, no. No. The 20% solution. Forgetting. Remember Manasseh? And what about number five? Fruitful, fruitful. Number six, forgive. Number seven, Bones, don't leave my bones here. And number eight, don't quarrel along the way. Now, that's our buffet. This is our menu. This, this is our smorgasbord. And it's actually, now, Pastor Jeremy, never preach eight-point sermons. <laughs> never do it. Everybody say, did you hear him? No. Jeremy, did you hear? Sorry? Say no, say no to him. 
What we're going to do now is I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you about one of these things. Might be the sade, might be the curry, might be the Kwaitao noodles. Maybe God has spoken to you this morning about forgetting. Maybe God has challenged you about giving. Maybe you've got to invest in others and don't leave my bones here. Whatever it is, Holy Spirit, we pray that you will speak to each one of us today, that we will take something that we can use. We can take something and make part of our life. Are you ready? Would you stand with me, please? I want you to raise your hand just like this. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that you speak to us through your word. We thank you that you reveal things to us and you give us dreams. And our dreams are always greater than where we are and what we are and who we are. And I'm praying for my friends here today that you will give them a very clear dream of what they can achieve in life. And I'm praying against all the smallness that other people speak over their lives. And I speak big bigness over them. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to lift them and use them and lead them and guide them. I thank you that in this room are men and women who will change this city and change our nation and change the world. We thank you for doctors and lawyers and we thank you for teachers and we thank you for husbands and wives and families. And I release you in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Holy Spirit, put, put a dream in their hearts. Look at me for a moment. You can put your hands down because now I need you to do something with your right foot. And I want you to say no. 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 This week, Lord, every one of us will be challenged in different ways. Some of us may be challenged sexually. We might be challenged uh, ch to cheat. In Lord, we resist the devil and we say to the devil, no, in the name of Jesus. No, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you will help these people to say yes to you and to say no to the enemy. And so, Lord... <laughs> Most of, my, most of my finances take place on my phone. Anybody do internet banking or phone banking? or So, so Lord, here's the 20% solution. And all the money I have is yours. Say that with me. All the money I have is yours. And I thank you that you're going to meet my needs in the most difficult of circumstances. And I pray that you will help me to save and to give. To save and to give. To give and to save that I might discover the 20% solution. And I break poverty over our thinking and over our lives in the name of Jesus. For people here that need part-time work, let there be work this week. I pray that people are looking for better jobs and more, more hours to work. And I thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your head for a moment. Lord, we forget... We, f we choose to forget the difficulties of yesterday. We will not carry yesterday into tomorrow. We let it go. We let it go in the name of Jesus. We're not going to carry yesterday into tomorrow. We forget in the name of Jesus. Now put your hands in front of you. Fruitful, fruitful. Fruitful, fruitful. I am blessed. I am blessed. I receive double blessings from you, Lord. I receive the blessing of Ephraim. Double blessings on my study this year. Double blessings on my career. Double blessings on my finances. Double blessings, I pray. We speak this over Glow Church and we're speaking double blessings in 2023. We're speaking double blessings in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we choose to forgive. We choose to pass on the baton and we will not quarrel on the journey. Amen. 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 God bless you. Please take your seats. I feel really bad about speaking so long. Please buy my book. Please buy another one for your pastor in Indonesia. And please pray for me in four weeks' time when I'm in Wuj. 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 Let there be miracles and healings in Wuj. Amen.
How are you, Julia? Lift your hands towards her. Fruitful, fruitful. Point your finger at her and say, you are doubly blessed, Julia. You're doubly blessed. You're blessed when you go out, when you come in, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Jeremy. Shalom semuanya. Merasa diberkati ya dengan firman hari ini. Sangat luar biasa, seperti biasa kita dikuatkan kembali sama Pastor Jeremy. Untuk pengumuman minggu-minggu ini, um, buat Bapak Ibu yang nggak bawa cash, kita bisa lakukan uh, transfer persembahan dan tithe online. Kita juga bisa mulai put into practice ya 10% yang baru dikotbahkan pada hari ini biar bekat Tuhan terus melimpah bagi kita. Kita juga ada box di depan, kalau yang bawa cash hari ini bisa berikan persembahan. And this week kita ada live group yang adult, di sini kita bisa saling belajar tentang firman, kita juga bisa saling mengenal satu sama lain. Everyone is welcome to join in and uh, saling memberkati satu sama lain. Dan juga di hari Sabtu kita ada one hour of worship where we come together and pray uh, buat kota ini, buat satu sama lain dan terus saling menguatkan. Kita perlu sekali ya untuk banyak berdoa bagi kota ini. Itu aja untuk one hour of worship. And next week we going to have Sunday service here again. Uh, boleh datang dan join bersama-sama. Pasti Jeremy mau yang akan khotbah minggu depan. Mari kita berdoa bersama-sama. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We honor you and worship you in this place, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the sermon this morning, Lord God, that we will forget, Lord Jesus, that we will let go, Lord God. And we just thank you for being fruitful, fruitful into our life. Kami bersyukur Tuhan untuk setiap firman yang baru diberitakan sama Pastor Jeremy, Tuhan. Biar firman itu boleh tertanam dan bertumbuh di dalam hati kami, ya Bapa. Terima kasih Tuhan Yesus kami berdoa dan memberkati bangsa ini, Tuhan. Kami memberkati bangsa Australia, tempat di mana kami tinggal, Tuhan. Sebagai pendatang, biar kami eh, memberkati bangsa ini, Tuhan. Dengan, dengan kebaikan-Mu, dengan kasih setia-Mu, Tuhan. Kami berdoa untuk para pemimpin. We speak blessing, Father, upon the Prime Minister, Lord God, of this nation, Lord Jesus. Father, we just thank you for the spirit of fear your name, Lord God, will fall upon the cabinet ministers. Father, every single decision making that they do upon this land, Lord God, let there be the name of Jesus over it. Thank you, Lord God. We also pray for the city of Adelaide, the place that you have put us, Lord God. Father, your word says to, to speak and to pray for the welfare and the prosperity of that city because it will be ours as well, Lord God. Lord, I just pray and speak blessing upon the city of Adelaide. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for Pat Peter Malinaskis, Lord God, as the premier of the day, Lord. Father, we pray that you will give him wisdom and the right people around him, Lord, to work alongside him that we, that we can see great things to happen in the city of Adelaide. Father, we also pray for lost souls, for broken family, for those people who doesn't even know you yet, Lord God. Father, we just pray that let there be the name of Jesus hover over every single family in the city of Adelaide, Lord God. Father, we thank you for, for joy. We thank you for wellness, Lord God, for safety in the city, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We also pray for the leaders that you have placed in, in our church for Glow uh, Fellowship Center, Lord God. Father, we pray for Pa Ray, Pa Yanche, and we also pray for Pa James, Lord God, as the mentor that you have put upon this church, Lord God. Father, we pray that you will bless their ministry, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to speak to them, Father. And we just thank you for every single thing that they have done upon this church. We also pray for our local pastor, Pastor Jeremy Moy, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to speak your heart, desire in his heart, Lord God. Father, we pray for servant heart leadership, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to guide him, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, that... 
uh, the all the things that you are about to do in the church, Lord God, that the best is yet to come for us at Glow Fellowship Center, Lord. And we also thank you for the new building that we are going to move soon, Lord God. Father, I just pray for every single preparation and paperwork, everything that needs to be done, Lord Jesus. We, we speak the name of Jesus, Lord God, upon that place, Lord God. We speak the name of Jesus over every single situation, Lord God. And we just thank you, Father, for open doors, Lord God, that will happen in this church, Lord Jesus. Father, I also pray for some of our congregations, some of the students who are still going away on holiday, Lord God, that you will protect them, Lord Jesus, that you will guide them, Father. Let there be no harm that come closer to them in the mighty name of Jesus. We also pray for your congregations, Lord, in this place, Father, who are currently applying for visa for permanent residency or for graduate skill visa or for student visa, any kind of visa, Lord Jesus, I pray for your hands to be upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. To let there be open doors, Lord God. Father, I pray for the will of, of God to happen in their life, that let their kingdom come and the, your will be done, Lord Jesus, over every single individual, Father, in this house, Lord. We also pray for uh, those who are looking for a job, Lord Jesus, for those who are looking for promotion, for permanent job, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for doors of opportunity, Lord Jesus, that will happen to every single one of your congregations in this house, Lord. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you. We also remember our um, nations, Indonesia, Father. We speak blessing upon the current president, Lord God, Joko Widodo, and the cabinet minister. Father, we also pray for missionaries who are going into remote part of Indonesia and preach the gospel for evangelists, Father, for pastors, Lord Jesus, over there, Lord God. I pray that the name of Jesus will be preached and will be heard into every single remote part of Indonesia, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God. I also pray for prosperity and safety, Lord God, upon Indonesia, Lord God. We speak blessing on the economy of this nation, Lord God. Father, that you will put the right people at the right time, Lord, in position of influence. Let there be the name of Jesus, Father. Power and victory, Lord God, over Indonesia. We thank you. We also pray for our family there, Lord God, that you will protect them. And maybe some of our aunties and uncles and cousins who doesn't even know you yet, Lord Jesus. Father, we will continue to pray until they will come to get to know you, Lord God. Until there is salvation in our household, Father, in our own family, Lord Jesus. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for amazing things that you are about to do in our life, Lord God. We lift you up on high, Father. We thank you that you are Emmanuel, the, the God who is always with us, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you are our provider, Lord God. We thank you for every single thing that you are about to do to us, Father. And I just pray that you will protect every single one of us this week as we are about to go and do our work and study, Lord God. Let there be blessings and favor will follow us all, Lord Jesus, through the days of our life. In your mighty name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Mari kita undang kita semua bangkit berdiri. Kita akan sama-sama mengaminkan pengutusan sebelum Pastor Jeremy uh, close in prayer. Mari kita sama-sama um, mengaminkan pengutusan. Karena itu jemaat sekalian, jadilah jemaat Tuhan yang penuh dengan sukacita hidup dalam kasih dan kebenaran. Mari kita sama-sama katakan amin. Jadilah jemaat Tuhan yang tidak saling menghakimi dan menjelekkan orang lain. Jadilah jemaat Tuhan yang diberkati serta mengerti kuasa dan otoritas yang ada dalam dirimu. Jadilah jemaat Tuhan yang dengan senang hati melayani Tuhan. Jadilah jemaat Tuhan yang senang berkorban untuk kemajuan pekerjaan Tuhan. Jadilah jemaat Tuhan yang memiliki hati yang bersih untuk selalu memuji dan menyembah Tuhan. Jadilah jemaat Tuhan yang selalu memiliki kerinduan untuk membawa damai dimanapun Tuhan tempatkan. So I would like invite us. That was, they were all the points of my sermon. Don't quarrel. You know what? So I bless you in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless this church. The Lord bless the families of this church. The Lord bless the individuals in this church. 
And I speak the blessing of Ephraim over you. Blessing upon blessing, fruitfulness upon fruitfulness, the favour of God upon the favour of God, grace upon grace and faith to faith. And I speak this over you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of His face upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, I speak this. Amen. 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 God bless you. Selesai. Um, selamat hari Minggu semuanya. Tuhan Yesus memberkati kita.